This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. All the code that I'm going to show you is going to work in MATLAB as it does in Octave and vice versa. We are in part 060, logic control. I'm going to review a few if statement concepts and then introduce a few little new things. All right, so here is an if statement working with a scalar value. Scalar just means a single numeric value as opposed to a vector, which is a list of probably numeric values, although I guess it could be something else. And for no particular reason, I've used the variable name g. g equals 30. If g is less than 50, then we're going to change some other variable. We're going to increment or increase the count by 1, and then we're going to display g. And regardless of whether or not this code executes, we're going to display this information afterward at the bottom here. The if statement is a detour. Maybe, if this is true, we detour over to this code and run it, but we're still going to end up at our destination where we were trying to get to regardless. Now, since this is true in this particular case, we're going to print out g, 30, and also count is going to be 1 when we display it out. But if I change g to make this not true and I run it again, well, now this code doesn't get run. The display of g never happens, but we still end up where we were going to get to anyway, but the value of count is different. Continuing on down, a very similar example, but with a vector. So I run this code, and it doesn't execute the code inside the if. It skips it. We do not take the detour. Because g less than 50 is not true in every situation. It has to be always true in order for the condition to be treated by the if as true, and in order to execute this code here. So since 55 is not less than 50, doesn't run. Now, if I change it to just a 5 and run it again, well, now each of the values in G is less than 50, so we will run this code right here, including changing count and displaying G, and we'll display count at the bottom regardless. Continuing on down, so here is perhaps the very first somewhat reasonable example for an if, and by reasonable, I just really mean like somewhat useful. So I run it, and I'm going to say to calculate the natural log, enter a value for X. And I'm going to say negative 9, because I don't understand anything about natural logs. And it says, no, 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 no. The input to the log function, well, gets cut off there, must be positive. And we're done with this example. So the else ran. This was false. So it printed out that the input had to be positive right there. Now if I try it again, and I put in 2.72, which I think is e rounded to two decimal places, I get something very close to 1. Ah, as I would hope for if I'm taking the natural log of e, the natural log of its own base, or at least something close to it. So in that case, the if statement ran. So I'm basically using the if as a guard against improper user input. You can't take the log of zero or a negative number, so I want to make sure that I'm not dealing with such a number before I try and take the natural log. The if with an else is not a detour. It's a fork in the road. You either have to take the left fork or you have to take the right fork. And it depends on whether or not this is true right here, but you will do one or the other. One little thing to note here, I left it in, it's a bit of a mistake, but I left it in to just demonstrate. In the input function, I can use a backslash n to get a new line, to move the rest of my text down to the next line. So I've got natural log comma, and then you'll see down on the next line is the word enter. And that's exactly what we see right here. There's no backslash n printed out. But when I run it again and do, you know, negative whatever, there is a backslash n right here because backslash n doesn't actually work with the display function. And I just left that in as a way to bring that up and, and let people know about that. Backslash n does work with f printf, but display is a very, very simple way of displaying output. And it turns out that it just doesn't work with backslash n. That has nothing to do with if statements. I just thought I'd throw it in there. All right, continuing on down. Invalid code. In fact, it's so invalid that if I didn't comment it out, it would break the entire document, not just the section. You can't have an else without an if. So if I try and run this code, I get an error. Now, I don't see people make that mistake that often, except where they do this. If x is less than or greater than or whatever, and then end. You don't end the if if you're planning on attaching an else to the if. Right? The else has to be chained or attached or connected to the if that came before it. And for each if, there's only going to be one end at the very end of that if. So if we want the else to be attached to the if, 
you can't do this with the end right there. Right now, there's two pieces. There's if this is true, we'll do something where it's currently blank, else we'll do this, and then we're finished. So you can't have an end all by itself, um, although usually people don't make that mistake unless they think that they need to put an end in, but don't do that, that doesn't work. All right, and finally, here's uh, new content, if you've been following these videos in order, is the ELSIF command right here. So ELSIF is very much what it sounds like. It's basically just else and then an if. And we could even, if we wanted to, although I don't recommend this, sort of rewrite it like this if we reformatted the rest of this document. We could say else and then separately an if. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use it all as one word. Some programming languages put a space between the else and the if. I guess I think I'm thinking of like Java and the C programming languages. MATLAB does not. Um, Python like abbreviates it to elif. MATLAB does not do that. It's just all one word, else if. Let's run the code and then I'll talk through it. All right, so in some states, uh, there's different sorts of driver's licenses. I don't know what the ages are. This isn't based on anything in particular, but are you eligible to drive? Enter your age, five. All right, that's way too young. Sorry, you'll have to wait. Let's try it again. Now, what if I say 17? All right, you may have a youth license. Okay, so it's a special type of license for young people. All right, run it again. Oh, now I'm uh, 40. Okay, well, you may have a standard license. Run it again. Now I'm 77. Whoops. Now I'm 70. Nope. Oh, it didn't put my focus over here. That's weird. Hey, it's not working. This is as good a time as ever to remind you that if you ever get something weird happening, especially with input, just click on your command window, hold control, and tap C a whole bunch until you get back to your command prompt here. And then click back over on this window or control shift tab to switch from the command window to this window over here, and then control enter and just try it again. All right, 77. There you go. Okay, drivers over 77 require a special like senior license. So now let's look at the code now that we've shown that it works. A lot of this is just comments, right? The green right here is just comments. It's not actually executable code. I think it's useful to put it in there because it's a nice explanatory English sentence sort of showing what's happening. I'm getting input from the user, putting that input into an age variable, and then I'm checking. If the age is less than 16, we're gonna execute this code, but we're gonna skip all the rest of the code. None of the rest of this executes all the way down to the end. Now, if this is not a true statement, then we're gonna skip this code, but we're gonna try and see if the age is less than 18 instead. And if that happens to be true, then we'll run this code and we'll skip everything else. But if that's false, then we'll go down here and we'll check this condition. And if it's true, we'll run this, otherwise we'll skip it. And finally, if all three of these conditions were false, we're gonna run whatever's in the else. The else is basically the condition of last resort. If everything else was false before it, well, this is the thing that's gonna happen. This is like, well, plan A is to display this, plan B is to display this, plan C right here. And if all the plans A, B, and C fail, then plan D will be executed down here. A common mistake that I see in newer programmers is they think they might need to write in right here, well, if 16 is less than or equal to age and age is less than 18, you do not need to do this and I don't think you should. The reason you don't need to do this is because it's implied. MATLAB won't even check if age is less than 18 unless age is not less than 16. We have to get past this condition before we'll even evaluate these later conditions. So if age is not less than 16, well then we know that it has to be greater than or equal to, so there's no reason to check it again. Now for that reason, another mistake that I have seen before is not putting these in the right order. You can't check if age is less than 70 and then expect later on to check if age is less than 16. It won't work because 16 is already less than 70. So you need to often put them in an order from the most specific to the most general. But that's only true if the conditions overlap, right? Because less than 16 is also less than 70. So we have to be a little bit careful. Code is still executing from top to bottom as it's always done. It's just a question of if we're gonna skip certain lines of code based on a true or false value. So here's a really good question. When do we want to use more than one if as opposed to an if and an else, or an if and an else if, or other combinations? And the answer to that has to do with whether the things you're evaluating are independent or dependent. 
So for example, right here, I have a numeric variable x, and I want to check if it's even, and I want to check if it's positive. Now, even and positive are not really related at all, right? Numbers can be even and positive, or even and negative, and positive or negative numbers could be even or could be odd. It doesn't really make any difference. So these are totally independent things that we're checking, so I just need two separate ifs, each of them with their own end. I haven't really talked about the mod function before, but it's short for modulus, and what it gives you is the first number divided by the second number, but only the remainder. So 8 divided by 2, but only the remainder, well, it's remainder 0. And if instead I do 9, well, 9 divided by 2, but only the remainder, it gives me a 1. So this is a nice way of checking if a number is even or not. And it's not even, so we didn't print this out. But it is positive, so we did print that one out. But, you know, it could be neither of these things. It could be negative 9, right? So then only the negative 9 runs. We skip this, and we also skip this. No detours. So if the conditions you're checking are totally independent, separate if statements. Continuing on down, if the conditions we're checking are not independent, then we at least want to use an else if, if not an else. So here, I'm checking if x is less than 0. Otherwise, if x is equal to 0. I'm not checking positive, though. For whatever reason in this context, I'm not interested in if x is positive. Only these two things. So I don't have an else. I just have these two cases right here. So since 8 is neither negative nor 0, it only displays the 8. But if I make it negative, great, it says that it's negative. If I make it 0, great, it says that it's 0. But again, if I make it positive, it doesn't display anything. So if you're checking dependent conditions, but they are not comprehensive, they don't cover all the possible situations, then you might want to use an if with one or more else ifs. But it is very possible for neither of these things to execute in this case. And if you want that to be true, don't use an else. So finally, I have a case with an if, an else if, and an else. When the else is at the bottom, you know that one of these options must occur, guaranteed, because that's kind of what the else's whole job is. If we're not in this situation, and we're not in this situation, then this has got to be everything else. So now I run this code, and well, it's an 8, and 8 is positive. I never checked. I never checked and said, is x greater than 0? I didn't have to, because it's the only remaining possibility after I've checked x less than 0 and x equal to 0. All right, that's all for this video. The next video is going to pick up right where this one left off, and I'm going to talk about switches and menus.